So you decided to join the outlaws? You hate those three hugging assholes and those religious fanatics and you wanna be a badass outlaw. So you go on and type the ultimate guide for uh, outlaws and you are here. So let's get started. So first of all I'm going to introduce you to the build. Then we are going to have a quick demonstration of the build. Then I'm going to give you even more information on how to progress with your build, uh, how to craft cams, uh, how to craft uh, melee weapons, add damage modifications to them, and I will probably have even more cool information, so stick around till the end of the video, you will learn something new. So let's uh, open an inventory. I have a uh, Gore Slaughter Blade level 3, so this is an outlaw weapon, you can buy it from... Um, well, you can buy it from a trader or you can find it uh, somewhere in the world and then upgrade it to level 3 and you should be adding bleed damage to it. So, we're going to... I'm going to show you how to craft stuff uh, a bit later on. Those are kind of additional stuff that I'm going to cover. For the ranged weapon for this build, I recommend Widowmaker. This is a heavy weapon that's ridiculously powerful. It does 114 damage, but it also fires in a burst mode, so it fires three shots, not one, so it is really, really powerful. But it also eats a lot of ammo, and you're going to end up buying so much ammo and probably <laughs> going to annoy you a bit. So that's one thing that I should point out about, about this weapon, but it's really good. The other thing about this weapon, you can fly with it, so even though it's a heavy weapon, you can fly around with it, which is ridiculously powerful. And uh, the locations for all the weapons that I'm showing you are in the locations playlist uh, that is linked in the uh, description. So I have uh, all the locations for the weapons that I found in my walkthroughs. There are over 100 or so videos in it and you can find everything that you need there. And let's move on. So... Other thing that if you kind of do not mind breaking out a bit from uh, outlaw character, you could use the mortal beam. This weapon is ridiculously good. One a cool thing about it is that it requires strength, lots more strength. So if you um, want to have a melee character first and foremost, then you can pick up uh, this weapon and uh, since it requires same stats as uh, melee weapons, requires strength, lots of strength, you can equip it. Of course, since you don't have dexterity, it's going to do less damage until you buff up your dexterity. But if you go into melee first, this weapon is pretty good for you. And the other weapon that I recommend is uh, the Redeemer. I recommend this weapon because it requires dexterity and intelligence. And this is very, very much synergetic with Animal Trophy's skill, um, which is really good way to farm up ma money. If you give uh, Animal Trophies to the max, you will get so much stuff when you kill uh, mutants or animals, and you will earn money really fast. And you will need lots of money in this game. So Animal Trophies are kind of you can earn money different ways, but are in my opinion are the best way to earn money. So you find that in a survival tree, animal trophies, and you will need uh, intelligence and dexterity to get it. So if you want to prioritize animal trophies in the beginning of the game, then definitely try out Mortal Beam. And uh, also there's uh, one other video that I did, which is best uh, range weapons. So you can check that out. I also explained uh, all of this in that video. And I also showed one more weapon that you can use a bit earlier than... Uh, than the Redeemer. That weapon, uh, really quickly, is uh, at a Separatist uh, hideout you will get here, not there... bit up. Let me see. This converter, yeah. This is the converter that you want to go to. So this is where uh, those Alp Separatists are, and on the second floor you can find one laser rifle that... Uh, it's not laser, it's plasma rifle that is same type as Redeemer, but requires lots less stats, so you can use it in the beginning of the game. Kind of throwing that tip in there. It's not for say and for outlaws, but I think you should know about it. 
so what else since we're here in uh, survival i'm going to point out that you should take good eater talent this is going to increase how much uh, health you regenerate from eating food and that's a segue into what uh, you should be using for food i also have a guide on how to craft these things strong bone marrow soup this is insanely powerful uh, it regenerates this is uh, this much it regenerates this much with the good eater talent it doesn't regenerate this much if you do not have the good eater talent and it's also going to give you additional armor and it regener regenerates over time so you can pretty much get uh, regeneration in combat kinda so that's why I'm not using any protection based camps because i think this is cheaper than uh, crafting camps and i like to have regeneration instead of reduction of damage since i already have a whole bunch of reduction uh, for damage from armor when you get uh, the best armor for outlaws you're kind of pretty much you're not going to receive that much damage and this is going to help you survive so let's look at the camps those are the basically quote-unquote skills for outlaws so uh, you learn that from William the outlaw trainer and uh, the ones that are good well there's only one that is really required to be honest this is the mind changer cam as you can see I have all of them but mostly I use this because cams require money to make them so you need ingredients and you need natural elixir and if you're going to fight an enemy it's not if you if you drink whole bunch of chems it's not really profitable because you won't get uh, as much resources from the mob that you killed so it's not really worth it it's maybe worth in an end game when you don't uh, need any money for anything else but in general you want to have this mind changer the other chems that you could use instead of uh, what i'm using that uh, strong bone marrow soup variant you could use tough guy cam and there's also one more cam um, steel skin cam and you have also immunity boosters but those are for resistances those are protection based cams but they're not really required with my build the, the other cam that is i'm also going to say optional is a pick me up cam this one gives you uh, more attack speed so it's kind of really synergetic with uh, two-handed weapons because you're going to hit faster but also hitting faster means uh, using up more stamina so hmm, i don't know and it also requires money to craft it so is it worth it probably not and the other things that well i have everything but other things are not really important the blood uh body cameras three um this increases the uh, duration of chems and this is something that you should definitely get really early on so you when you use the chem um, it lasts longer you need less chems you do not waste as much money <laughs> on them so you definitely want to invest there the chem capacity as I said, you should be using just one cam and be just fine, to be honest. Maybe two cams, so you can get it later on, but do not stress too much about it. And the cams work in a way when you drink one cam, so let's say I take the cam, cam it uses my cam capacity, or if you're berserker, that will be called a mana, or energy if you're cleric. And once the cam runs out, it will return my cam capacity to the max so i could take take one more cam here and after that i could not that take any more cams so i this cannot work. take any so that's what i have equipped i have uh, my core reaper blade axe with bleed i have strong bone marrow soup i have um tough guy yam. Uh, not of game mind changer cam i have uh, pick me up cam i have video maker which is ridiculously awesome because you can fly with it and it fires three shots we're going to see more of that, that is and there is one more thing that i want to show you so in terms of armor of course you will uh, use the best that you can get 
as you get promoted. So we can I can also equip this captain's uh, armor. So that's what I'm using here. But I want to show you the rings and uh, amulets. So in my opinion, this is the best ring if you're doing uh, melee combat. It gives strength and stamina. As I said, if you you can turn off stamina if you do not. Uh, well, you just go options difficulty and turn the stamina off, and then you play don't have to care about stamina but uh, if you want a challenge maybe yeah, make yourself uh, some stamina potions and use this ring if not you can also use dual skill ring but then you're sacrificing some strength to dexterity so it's kind of balance balancing act there it kind of gives both rings give 10 uh, attributes but it's this time strength and dexterity Five of each and this one gives 10 strength so i don't know i think this one is better in my opinion and for the amulet we have the awesome amulet of the defense this is also the reason why i'm not using any uh, protection based camps i'm just using amulet of defense and this is going to give me one time second chance during combat so if I die during combat, my health gets regenerated to the max and also saves my, my ass if I fall off some cliff or something like that. But you can do that, uh, just stop uh, spacebar when you kind of near the edge and then you won't die. But if you not get used, didn't get used to that, this is a really good way to survive. And yeah, I hope that wasn't too rambly, but this is the the build that I'm using. So let's uh, see it in action. So I've teleported to small camp and let's have our demonstration. So I'm going to start with the ranged weapon and we're going to do some flying around and use it that way. And I'm also going to re-equip my amulet since I did something and I started recording again forgot to re-equip it and one thing to point out the difficulty it's custom but it's on ultra basically only that i only thing that i have turned off is aim help i know what why that was on and i have my stamina cost on normal and everything is ultra let's drink the camp and let's fly above him That's really awesome. You're better off in the air. I mean, you're going to be able to avoid enemies, but you're also... Uh, when you shoot like this, you might hit some um, hill or something like that and not do the damage. And it's also knocking them around, which is... Really good. So that's the ranged weapon, but we killed all the enemies, so let's go somewhere else for a melee weapon demonstration. And I'm also going to let the enemies hit me a bit, so you can see how the amulet works and also how the food works. So we have uh, more enemies here. I'm going to take uh, my food. And you can see how that works. The regeneration is pretty good, of course. If I continue letting them hit me, which I will. If you get hit uh, by a bigger mob, you're probably going to lose the amulet. But other than that, you are probably good. Take more food because uh, the buff ran out. Take small fry first.
I can accidentally took double damage twice instead of uh, using pick me up cam. So we're going to do more fighting. Let's just wait for the cam to run out so I can take uh, other two camps in the same time. So I'm going to buff myself with food, with one cam and with the other cam and let's do this. I'm totally brute forcing to them. I could have uh, parried or dodged, but it's not like I'm going to die, so it's not a big deal. Even if you let enemies hit you, if you have your food. Just take the food. We don't have uh, amulets, so you should be careful at that point. It works only once per combat. The regeneration is insane on this. I did hit, let him hit me a few times so you can see. And once the fight is over, just go into inventory and re-equip it. And now it's going to work. I'm going to show you one extra tip with the amulet. Come on, hit me. <coughs> Let's say you were fighting the enemy and you lost some of the health. And the fight, uh, you could let enemy take all of your health and reset that way. But let's say you finish the fight and you want to restore your health. You could fly up and just fall down and restore your health. Or uh, that's there's even faster way. If you have something like Redeemer equipped. There. Redeemer, I think it's Redeemer. And you set it on... Uh, you can also do it with uh, other weapons, but with this one, if you're on really low health, you just uh, damage yourself even further. <laughs> and just uh, re-equip the amulet again. And free health regeneration. <laughs> or you could just use the food, it's not really that expensive to craft, but... If you're a cheapskate, then <laughs> that's the way to do it. So let's look at uh, the progression, how you should get to this point. I reloaded to an older save game. This is part 37 of my walkthrough series save game. And this is before the walkthroughs branch off into different directions for each faction. And I'm here on this character so I can show you what uh, are the requirements for the skills that I'm going to recommend you put in. So let's get started. But I'm going to ask you a question because I have a two different, different way, uh, ways to develop a character. Do you want to be uh, drinking Elix drink or in Elix drinks or not? If you're not going to drink them, I'm going to recommend one way. If you're going to drink them, I'm going to recommend a different way. I'm, in my opinion, you should be drinking Elix drinks. It's, you don't have to overkill it, uh, but you can drink them. It's not a big deal. But if you want to get that pure emotional ending, because there are three different endings, you get uh, one ending if you have really low cold values, you get uh, one ending if you get really high cold values, and you have a neutral, which uh, doesn't, you don't have to have a neutral cold values, you get that one either way. And that one is actually pretty okay, so you don't have to stress about uh, if you go really high into cold values. Just saying it. You're definitely not going to get one of the endings because you cannot have really low and really high cold values at the same time. You could do one thing and that is not drink Elix drinks until the end of the game and just craft ridiculous amount of uh, Elix drinks uh, near the end of the game and then you play to through the end of the game without Elix drinks, then you reload, drink a whole bunch of Elix drinks and finish the game with uh, the high cold values if you wanted to do something like that. But it's kind of throwing it around and uh, not important for this video. So if you're not going to drink Helix drinks, here's what I recommend. I recommend you go with melee weapons for outlaws. You could go range weapons, but totally up to you. But I recommend melee weapons. And I recommend going strength constitution route. 
instead of going a strength dexterity route because you're going to need uh, constitution to wear the armor and constitution is going to help you survive the fights and in my opinion uh, it doesn't require that much con the, the weapons that uh, require constitution require just a tiny bit more constitution than you need it for the armor for the highest level armor so it's kind of okay investment and uh, two-handed weapons for outlaws while there is this warrior poison sword this is a berserker weapon they you need a strength constitution so if we go um i'm going to quickly teleport in front of here so you have to buy an actual outlaw weapon uh, to be able to add a damage modification to it. And uh, you buy those weapons from uh, this guy. And you can check what he has, what types of weapons are there. And most of the weapons that are two-handers, are they require constitution. So if you want to use two-hander, you will need a constitution. And you can also have a one-handed weapon with a constitution. So don't have to choose between one-handers and two-handers if we went if you go constitution route um the thing with you will still have to get some dexterity because but that's kind of first get your strength and the constitution and highest level possible of the weapons and uh, then you will need to invest into dexterity to get uh, melee weapons but not much of dexterity and that dexterity is also going to help you with using some ranged weapon. But you don't have to go too crazy into investing into this uh, talent. I would say that the better way is to actually get a higher level weapon. And actually invest into strength constitution route. But you can also go with uh, strength dexterity. But focus on one thing. Do not try to go range and melee at the same time. The other way to play your character is, uh, well, to actually invest into animal trophies. Animal trophies are the best way to earn money. And the only reason you shouldn't take them is if you're going to be uh, going pure emotional route. And even then I actually took them in uh, that playthrough. I didn't need money for anything, so it's kind of... You do not need money that much if you go pure emotional. Uh, because most of the money that you're going to need is for uh, armor and then for Elix drinks. And you're going to have enough money for armor one way or another. But if you want to drink Elix drinks, you're going to go into Animal Trophies and uh, get this as soon as possible to the highest level. So you're going to be investing into Intelligence and Dexterity early on. And early on, you're going to be using a ranged weapon. You can switch after some time, after you farm up uh, money, you can switch to uh, melee weapons and craft uh, elix drinks to increase your uh, strength. And then you can use uh, melee weapons. You can max out your stats in no time with uh, this uh, way. You might not want to overkill it and go into synthetic if you don't want, but you can drink lots and lots of uh, elix drink before you get into trouble. And if you want to know how to craft elix drinks and everything, I already had a guide for that. So that the links are for the guides are in the description. Kind of, if you're wondering about that, I've been talking about elix drinks and not explaining what they are. <laughs> Uh, but they increase your uh, abil uh, attributes and skill points. So once you've done that, um, you maxed out that. The cool thing is that the ranged weapons also require intelligence and dexterity. And then you go and get yourself a um, plasma rifle. This plasma rifle, then uh, you get this... Uh, <laughs> The Redeemer, this is a really, really insane rifle. This one you get at uh, Alp Separatist Skydown. This one you get uh, at Alp Converter in uh, this one. So in Northern Abessa, on top of it, you get that. And uh, I have locations for that uh, in the locations playlist down below. So you go with this early game. And once you... 
farm up, farm up uh, natural elix from uh, well you farm up uh, the animals and you can do anything you want you can max out your strength you can max out your dexterity if you want to do more range damage <laughs> They're endless possibilities, so you don't have to stress too much about it if you're doing this route. Just get animal trophies early on, get plasma rifle, get redeemer, and you're golden. After that, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> it's pretty easy to, to get other stuff. So next thing that we want to cover is uh, crafting camps. Mostly the materials drop from animals and mutants, and you learn uh, the how to craft camps from either William or you can buy a recipe from Doc. So what do you have to I'm not sure what's kind of ex more expensive, but you have to try that on your own. And decide either to buy a recipe or learn it from William. Either way, I kind of learned it from William because I wanted to get an achievement for learning all um, all of the talents, all of outlaw talents. But you can also buy it from here. And Doc is going to interfere with me. So let's go into camps. You want to craft Mind Changer, maybe pick me up uh, camp, but mostly you want to craft Mind Changer. So let's go over how to craft this one. Uh, the, uh, the ingredients drop uh, from animals and from mutants. And uh, mandibles are really not good to farm. They drop... Um, Mostly from... Um, there are some enemies around here. We can check uh, if they're there. I found us uh, some enemies that drop mandibles. So they are usually around the waters. So maybe here, here, here. I don't know. You should check around the waters. I know that they are here. And those are some kind of bugs that you need to kill. There's one in distance. <laughs> Armored locuses. I forgot how they are called. But they drop mandibles. So as you can see, we got two mandibles. And they also drop cheating armor, which uh, you need for amulet of the defense if you want to craft it. So they are definitely worth if you want to go and craft Amulet of the Defense, but if you want to craft uh, Mind Changer Cam, I would suggest actually going uh, against some um, higher level mutants that are near teleports, like this here is a good spot, uh, and uh, here for farming, so you can farm it pretty fast. Not here, but uh, here and... Uh, here, then I think also uh, was it here? You can farm them, uh, farm those higher level mutants and uh, buy mandibles from uh, the traders. So that's my way of crafting them. I don't like to uh, chase those bugs because there's not enough of them and they do not drop uh, that much uh, mandibles to begin with. And I think it's more worth it to farm uh, yeah. higher level mutants and then just go to this guy. You can buy all the ingredients. He sells natural elix. He also sells mandibles. So you can buy it from him. And he should also sell electronic scraps. So you can buy everything that you need for uh, camps from him. But I wanted to also show you where we can uh, farm uh, mandibles if you want to. And ingredients for other chems, you also get them from animals if you want to craft any other chems, but <laughs> I think Mind Changer is the only chem that's really worth it investing money into. Uh, I should put other money towards uh, Elix drinks instead of chems, so I don't think it's a good idea to um, invest in other camps. This cam is really important, other camps not so much. I know it's kind of bare bones build, but I think this way is better. So you craft Mind Changer, if you have it, 
and you, you're golden. One last thing that I want to cover is how to upgrade your weapons. And for this, you have to have an actual outlaw weapon. You cannot have a berserker weapon. So if you have a weapon, you can check if it's for outlaws. It's going to say something along, along these lines. Legendary outlaw and uh, something like that. Mm, let me find something that's not for outlaws. It says an upgraded berserker two-handed sword. So you cannot use this. You have to use an outlaw weapon. And you don't have to look for them in the world. You can just uh, get it from uh, this trader here and upgrade it further. So you, I would recommend finding some weapons that already have uh, damage added to them, like Ignis or uh, there is this Gore Reaper blade, uh, which is... You can find it in the world, uh, I have uh, links in the description, you can find it, it's really good for early game, it requires just uh, 38 constitution, not much, and 61 strength, which is pretty good, or you could use uh, something else, I don't have any, I think I sold weapons here, but... Uh, you get this thing, or you get some other weapon that has already damage on it, and you use that until you get to a point where you want to have uh, a level 3 weapon. There are level 1 and level 2 weapons with damage on them already applied, laying around the world that you can just pick up and use. But if, uh, to get the highest possible damaging weapon, which does... Why 200 does 94 damage. I actually added some uh, sockets also, so really good you have to go to outlaw trader and uh, buy it what good but when you join uh, outlaws you will get access to more weapons so you will get access to level 2 weapons so you can straight up buy a level 2 weapon and there are sometimes i think this is a bit randomized there are some level 3 weapons like this grenade launcher so you can straight up uh, buy a level 2 weapon from him or if there is a level 3 weapon available. And you have to go to some crafting bench, but before you go to crafting bench you have to learn uh, one skill from uh, William here. And I already learned it here, but you speak to him and uh, you want Te him to teach you something and that is uh, low tech weaponsmith. So you get this and you can... Um, add the damage modifications to it so unlocks ability to upgrade outlaw weapons at the workbench and to upgrade uh, the weapons to level 3 to upgrade it you can do that before you join the faction you can upgrade weapons and that is with uh, crafting you have to do modify weapons so you have to have these two skill points before you uh, decide to craft uh, level 3 weapon so this is end then game and uh, we're going to go to the bench. There is one where Doc is. And we have to force him to go away by speaking to him. And now uh, you go to your uh, weapon that you bought or uh, found somewhere in the world. Here it is. This is mine. And you first upgrade it to level 3. You will need uh, iron and gold nuggets for this weapon. For some other weapon you might need something else. But I should point out that it also requires some elixir to do so. And once you upgrade it, it's going to do 90 damage. And there we go. And then uh, with this skill, which gives you low tech weaponsmith, you can add blood damage. You can add nuclear damage so radiation or you can do this but in uh, my testing only one that actually is worth it is bl uh, bleed so these other ones are useless so get bleed and once you add bleed damage to it uh, you also need um, to add bleed damage, you need iron or metal scrap, hand grenades. You can buy hand grenades from the trader and also I think you can buy everything from the trader. But you also need 9k elixir. So this is 
expensive, but this is also the best weapon in the game. And once you crafted it, you will have uh, another... Hmm. Okay, I have to exit it from here, that's kind of a deal. So I will have the one that I have equipped and I have... Uh... Oh, this is... Uh... <laughs> I bought the wrong one. Uh, this is Slaughter Blade and this is uh, a Reaper Blade. So this one does four less damage. That's kind of the difference. Not a big difference, but there is also a small difference in stat requirements. So you can... Uh... Find Slaughter Blade level 3, or actually level 2, upgrade it to level 3, or even you can find level 1 and upgrade it to level, uh, level 2 and then level 3. So just find one uh, Slaughter Blade. And there is also. Um, I think there's one laying around somewhere in the world, but you can buy it, it's not a big deal. Just buy it and make it. At that point, that's an endgame weapon. Don't have to worry about it. You probably have money for it, so just buy it, upgrade it, and that's the best weapon that you can use. So, guys, uh, this part of the video was a bit... Uh, I mean, some parts of the video are a bit rambly, but I really hope that uh, I helped you out with... Um, your Outlook character build. If I did, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you have more questions about any faction or anything about Elix, feel free to ask in the comments. And see you in the next one.